Hi again everybody, Coulter Brown here from the Northern Ag Network with our update on livestock markets. I want to start this report by thanking Ag Risk Advisors for continuing to sponsor this. You know, there's a lot of risk in the ag industry right now, so I guess Tate and Aaron and the whole crew are really earning their keep this year. If you have questions about livestock risk protection or pasture, rangeland, and forage insurance, or even whole farm revenue protection, be sure to reach out to them. Check them out, agriskadvisors.com. Well, surviving this summer is about all we can do this year. Just tons of challenges with this drought. As you look at that drought monitor, it's really only intensified over the last month. We've got grasshoppers that are getting thicker by the day. Of course, the hay market just launching higher, paying almost double what we did a year ago, even more than that in some cases. And of course, our thoughts and prayers are certainly with the folks fighting fire this summer. We'll be darn glad when this summer is over and we can look at a few snowflakes for a change. Actually, right now, as we get into our markets, they're kind of the bright spot at this point. Not to say that prices are exactly where we want them to be, but it's been surprising to see the strength that these cattle and sheep markets have had over the summer. As we look at the feeder cattle futures, they did see some pressure at the end of June and certainly in the beginning of July, but they marched higher in the back half of the month and actually reached some new contract highs. I don't think I would have predicted that going into August, fall feeder contracts are in the mid-160s. It's helped to have corn prices that actually came down at the end of the last month and beginning of this month, and then they turned fairly flat. Now I say fairly because there's a ton of volatility in grain markets right now, but September corn has kind of averaged around that 550 a bushel mark lately, and some analysts are projecting that it could get down to five bucks once a new crop comes in. Now that's a higher cost of gain than we've seen the last several years, but certainly more manageable than $7 corn. Live cattle contracts have slowly worked higher over the last month, even though we did see some seasonal weakness in box beef. Looking towards the 2022 fat cattle contracts though, prices have gained a lot of ground. That April contract near $1.40 at this point, and that's providing incentive for feeders to get these calves bought, and I think it is helping support video sale prices. More on that in just a moment. The cash cattle trade is really where we're underperforming as far as the price goes. We've seen prices generally move lower over the last month despite the board increasing. But if you look at those futures, they're projecting prices to move higher. So hopefully as we get into the fall, we will see higher cash fed cattle prices. One really surprising aspect of the markets to me is this coal cow market. Of course, the drought is bringing a lot of dry cows and older cows to town as it just isn't the forage or feed to keep them at home through the fall but the price holding in pretty strong. And I think that's supported by ground beef demand. You know, as we see fleshy cows that are selling 70 cents right now, and even the thin cows in the 60 cent range, that's pretty strong, especially with that large supply. I do think likely to move lower as we get into August and certainly September. That's usually when we see that cow market move down, but it's been really nice to see it holding in at least this far. Several video sales over the last month here. Superior Livestock held their week in the Rocky sale, and we can easily say that prices are $15 to $20 a hundredweight better than they were last year. 2020 certainly saw a lot of challenges on the cattle market side, so that may not be saying a whole heck of a lot, but good to see those prices on the rise. You know, a lot of challenges for ranchers right now is they're weaning calves early and selling less pounds than they normally would, but these calves certainly dollaring up a lot better. Upper four weight steers average near the $2 mark, lighter five weights in the superior sales selling in the 180s and into the low 190s, and bigger five weight steers 174 to 182. Saw a lot of calves for fall delivery sale on the Northern Livestock video sale in their summertime classic. They met with pretty good demand though, as there are areas of the country that do have some feed resources right now, so those calves are doing decent on price. We're certainly seeing a premium though for those later November delivery cattle. There just aren't very many of them right now. It does appear that the premiums on the value-added program cattle are starting to come down. Now, if they have all the bells and whistles, the NHTC, GAP4, they're definitely still bringing a premium, but we're marketing more program cattle now, and that niche could be getting filled to some degree. In that sale for Northern Livestock video, we saw the real light 350 to 425 pound steers bringing 213 to 225. On the heavier end, six weights did really well from 166 to 174, and yearlings doing really good, meeting a lot of demand with eight and nine weights selling primarily in the 150s and low 160s. 12,000 head of lamb sold on that Northern video sale, and I don't think sheep producers can be disappointed at all. We're seeing great demand for American lamb. Lambs weighing anywhere from 70 to 100 pounds brought 292 up to 303. Now on the policy front, last month we talked about the Senate Ag Committee hearing on cattle markets, 
And in July, we saw both the House Ag Committee and Senate Judiciary Committees hold hearings. Of course, they talked about black swan events and the impact that the pandemic, the uh, packing plant fire in Holcomb, Kansas, and the JBS cyber attack ha had on markets. And they actually had two representatives, one from Tyson and one from JBS in the Senate Judiciary Committee, and they kind of raked him over the coals about the effect that consolidation has had on the beef industry. Of course, a lot of discussion on improving price transparency, especially in the fed cattle market. There's talk about mandating cash cattle trade, reporting grid and formula sales, and looking at a contract library. There are proposals in Congress to do just those things. Now, the best chance to get those passed would be in the reauthorization of livestock mandatory price reporting. That's due September 30th. Now, it's possible Congress just kicks the can down the road, but nothing moves wheels in Washington like a deadline, so we may see something before the end of the year. Now, I want to wrap up today's report by looking at a couple of USDA cattle reports that came out in July. They released their semi-annual cattle inventory report that said beef cow and replacement heifer numbers are down 2% from last year. Now, that's more than was expected, and of course, partially due to the cyclical nature of the cow industry and the lack of profitability we've seen over the last few years. But of course, a big chunk of that due to drought as well. And I don't think the drought is totally factored into that report, so we'll likely see cow numbers move lower when the January report comes out. USDA also released their cattle on feed report that said total supplies in feed yards continuing to move lower, down 1% from a year ago, and placements into feed yards 7% lower. Now that's good news for cattlemen as front end supplies move down and leverage shifts to feeders from the packing segment. So falling cattle supplies, packing capacity that is increasing over the next year and a half here, and of course, outstanding beef demand, they all bode pretty well for the future of the beef industry and hopefully higher prices. Now, if we could just get some moisture to go with it. Well, that's gonna do it for today's report. Thanks so much for joining us. And of course, thanks to Ag Risk Advisors for their support. If you have questions about LRP or PRF, check them out online at agriskadvisors.com. Hope you survived the rest of the summer okay. We'll see you down the road for our next report.